Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Today's video is in collaboration with Jessica from The Waldock Way and all of you because today is Jessica and my monthly homeschool show and tell open collaboration where every single month we open up a playlist on the second Tuesday of the month for anybody with a YouTube channel who wants to join on the topic may do so. The purpose of this collaboration is to show that homeschooling is not one size fits all and there isn't just one single way to do it. So lots of voices collaborating on the same topic really show how differently everybody homeschools and just how different it can look in every home. Hopefully you will find somebody new that you enjoy during this playlist who you know, resembles your homeschool or inspires you that you can follow along with. So make sure you check out the playlist down below, pop through some of these videos and see what everyone is up to in their homeschool. So today's topic is how we make math fun and I'm excited to share. So like, subscribe and stick around. This is how we make math fun in our homeschool. So I actually just recently did a video on my favorite math resources. I will put that up here in the corner. Um, today, instead of going through specific resources, because as I thought about this video, I realized we do a lot of advertising math in our homeschool. There is math all over the place in our homeschool. We do not just use our math curriculum and that's it. Um, so instead of giving the specific resources, I'm going to give you guys an overview of the different ways that we advertise doing math and some examples of those resources, if that makes sense. So to backtrack a little bit, I will share that from kindergarten on, my older three kids have followed the same protocol when it comes to math and it has worked out for all three of them. So I'll just give you a quick rundown. They use Horizons Math for kindergarten and first grade. And then in second grade, they switch over to teaching textbooks. It is a smooth transition and all three of them have enjoyed that transition. My kids really love teaching textbooks and I think in itself, that's really fun. There's fun bonus rounds, there's stickers, there's wallpapers, there's interactive, you know, it's just, it's so fun for them. They all love it and it's independent. You know, they feel like they're doing it completely on their own and I'm able to keep track of everything and notice when there's something that they're repetitively getting wrong or a concept that they're maybe trying to answer more than once and then I can pull a resource and say, okay, we need to work on your times tables or we need to work on, on um, counting coins a little bit more because I can see which questions they're um, getting wrong or repeating. So first things first, that is the, the system we've used in our homeschool for math. But beyond just horizons and teaching textbooks, um, I think it would be a surprise to my kids to hear me say what I'm about to share with you, which is I think math is the subject that we spend the most time on every day in our homeschool, but I don't think they would know that because it takes them and my oldest, you know, is doing a higher level math at the most 30 minutes a day to complete all their math lessons. Um, they probably think that's it. And we spend far more time reading or doing history or their language lessons. But the reality is most of our resources and most of what I advertise around our homeschool is math different forms of math, logic, games, manipulatives. And I think that um, when, you, when I count all the time we spend on those different forms of math, we probably spend over an hour every day on math independently or together. So I'm gonna actually flip the camera around and give you an example of different places and ways that we advertise math in our homeschool. And then you can check out all the other videos um, from everyone else and see how they make math fun in their homeschool. So it's just important to me that they are constantly getting um, practice in these different math concepts. And I just think we live in a day and age where there are so many fun resources available that we can be doing little bits and pieces of math all day long, making it fun, engaging our kids, and they probably don't even realize half the time that they're doing math. So here is how I advertise math in our home and um, some of my favorite resources in each of those little areas as well. So the first way that I advertise math is through quality time. Being a large family with mostly family style learning, my kids really value and appreciate our one-on-one -on -one time together. So I make it a point to do two things with them alone each week. 
One, I sit down and do some deductive reasoning with them. We have really enjoyed the Critical Thinking Co. over the years, and so we've used their books for a long time. They're challenging and they're really fun to work out together. I honestly have had to peek at the answers a couple of times with my older kids, so I know that it's a really valuable use of our time because it is difficult for me to do even as an adult. The second thing that I try to do weekly is play a two-player math game with each of my kids, just one-on-one. -on -one. So we really like the Logic Roots games in our house. They have a story that goes along with each game and there are multiple ways to play each game. So it's never the same way twice. Although you're working on the same math skill each time you play, it's just a different way to play the game, multiple ways to play each game. So for me, this replaces like math drills or flashcards because while I'm playing with them and they're kind of like under the pressure of wanting to win, they're thinking really quickly. So it's very similar to, at least to me, um, as like math drills or flashcards would be. So math dice are also a really good way to do this. Um, math dice has been a favorite for years as well. If I notice any finger counting or consistent mistakes and I know that we need to work on something again, so it's a great way to have fun while at the same time checking in on each of them on a regular basis. So these are just a few of our favorites and I'll link some of these games and resources in the description box down below. But first up, the way I advertise it is just through some quality time, through some deductive reasoning and some one-on-one -on -one games. If you guys have been around here for a while, then you'll know what I'm talking about when I say the warm-up bin. So the next way that I advertise math is through what I call the warm-up bin or the warm-up shelf. Um, I'll link my game storage video up here in the corner so you can see how I store our toys and manipulatives. That'll be helpful when I uh, mention like rotating things in our warm-up bin. So every couple weeks I'll rotate some of them into our warm-up bin, which is just a tote bin I keep in our schoolroom for my kids to play with when they finish a lesson or while they're waiting for me to finish with another child. I actually used to call it like the warm-up or cool-down bin because when other subjects got a little intense, they could also go and play with something in the warm-up or cool-down bin and kind of like cool off. Um, but also it helps them warm up for other subjects, keeps their minds engaged. And so I put a lot of STEM style toys and manipulatives in there, but I always have something in there for math. So it's a great use of tidbits of time. It's also a great way to keep their minds engaged during times that they might wander or get distracted. The types of math activities that I keep in there are self-correcting or just like engaging. So we really like the self-correcting learning palettes, which go from simple math all the way up through geometry and decimals as well as some of Melissa and Doug's products, which you guys know I'm a big fan, and then some Etsy finds. There are some great, <laughs> great finds on Etsy, but be forewarned, you are gonna want it all. It's all very beautiful and really helpful. So again, these are just a few of our favorites. If you guys have been around here a long time, then you know that I can't say no to a math game or activity. So throwing it back to basics here, I can't talk about advertising math without mentioning some classics 
We've been homeschooling for 10 years, so keep that in mind. We've always had a preschooler or a toddler in the house, so our collection has grown for years and years, but one toy that I've always kept out when my kids were toddlers sitting in the schoolroom with us has been patterning or sequencing toys. Um, it's just been really helpful to always have something out in case one of my younger kids comes in the room and wants to play or wants an activity, because these are things that can be played with just with some supervision or can be played with in an engaging way as well. So they can kind of play independently, although there's little pieces, um, or you can just do an activity with them. And I just, I always feel like when my kids are younger, they need that at times throughout the day that I'm unprepared for, I'm not sure when to expect it. Some days they don't want to do anything at all. Some days they want to come in and play or play school. And uh, so I like to keep a couple of things out with shapes or patterns, um, just on our schoolroom floor on a table so it's easily accessible. I can hand it to them or I can sit down if I catch five minutes. I have so many memories of playing with these types of like shapes and sorting and patterning toys since our earliest homeschooling days. And I honestly really think that our time spent with these toys helped make some connections later on. So I'm just showing a few of the many that we love in our home, but they've proved to be a worthy investment and they still do get played with by my older kids, even if it's kind of just mindlessly. So uh, makes my heart, you know, pretty happy just to know that they're still playing with those. It's still relaxing for them or enjoyable for them. And like I said, I honestly think that our time playing with these when they're toddlers or preschoolers has helped them just enjoy math, make some connections later on. And also it's just been nice to keep something out because whenever they do wander in the room, whenever they do want to do something, just to know like, oh, here's something for you or here's something we can do together. And again, it's centered around math or, you know, shapes or patterns, which helps just establish a good relationship with school. Okay, and so when I talk about advertising math, it actually comes from something that I say a lot, which is advertising reading. And there's like the four B's of reading, which is the back seat, the bedroom, bedtime, and the breakfast table. And a couple of these are really great spots to advertise math to, a couple of boredom spots, the bathroom and the back seat. So I really like keeping math activity books in the car or in the bathroom. I don't really think I need to explain how much value a good book can be in the minutes that add up in those spaces, but here are just a few of our favorites. But as with the other toys, like I mentioned earlier, I try to rotate these out on a regular basis just to keep it fresh and just something different um, because like I said, the minutes can really add up in there. So, um, you know, you don't want to see the same book over and over and over again because you've likely read it over a time or few, a, a time or two um, over a few days. So I like to rotate these out too. And this is something that I really am a collector of, just math activity books, math books. Love these books so much. So these are just a few of the ways that I advertise math in our home, keep it engaging, keep it fun, non-threatening, you know, it's just kind of little bits and pieces all over the place. So like I was saying earlier in the video, 
I don't think my kids realize how often we are doing math or playing math or engaging with math just because it's kind of all over, sprinkled in throughout our days in many different ways. So of course we love math games and activities as a family, but you guys see these all the time in my gift guide videos. So I'll spare you a few minutes of like going through some of our favorite games as a family, but there really is something to be said about attaching joy to math through our time together as a family. So I do love collecting math games for our family time as well, but that would be a whole nother video. So those are some of my favorite ways to advertise math in our home. I hope you guys enjoyed this video on how we make math fun in our homeschool. I hope it gave you some new inspiration or ideas for making math fun in your homeschool. If you are linking up on today's collaboration, thank you guys so much for participating with Jessica and I. Do check out Jessica's video after this one because I feel like she is the queen of cool resources. So as we're approaching the holiday season, you might want to check out her channel if you are wanting to get some ideas um, and make sure you check out everybody else's video in the collaboration as well because I am sure there are going to be a ton of different ideas for different ages, different you know family learning styles. I'm super excited to get some new inspiration from this playlist. So thank you guys for collaborating. Thank you for watching today's video and I will see you soon. Bye guys.